What's up guys, Ben here and welcome to Motivation to Invest. Bill Atman is one of the greatest investors of all time. As CEO and founder of Pershing Square Capital, he's worth an estimated $1.5 billion. He's a true activist investor and not afraid of making bold bets against the consensus. He's similar to the great Carl Icahn, of which he had a massive feud with. In 2020, he had an incredible achievement. He turned $27 million into $2.6 billion. That's a 100x return on his investment. In other words, if you would have done the same investment as Bill Atman, you could have turned $1,000 into $100,000 or $10,000 into a million dollars. In other words, you could have become a millionaire in just a few weeks. So what's his secret to success? Well, in this video, we're gonna find out as I deep dive into Bill Atman's portfolio and see which stocks he's been buying during this 2020 market crash. So without further ado, let's dive in. Right guys, so taking you over my shoulder, we're now into Bill Atman's portfolio worth approximately $6.57 billion. So here we can see that there's 10 stocks in this holding. So it's a fairly small holding, but that 10 stocks number is recommended by a lot of the great investors as it's very difficult to keep track of many, many stocks. I personally have over 50 stocks in my portfolio, which is a, a little bit too diversified. So I'm going to rebalance in the future and be a little bit more concentrated like Bill Ackman. But anyway, most of these um, stocks in the portfolio, Bill Ackerman has added to, so he's added and increased his positions in these companies. Um, a couple of these are new positions, which he's created, and new purchases. So let's start off with the new purchases. The first one is Blackstone Group Incorporated. Now, I'm sure you've heard of Blackstone Group. These make up 0.38% of his portfolio. Now, bear in mind, this is a $6.5 billion portfolio. So even 0.3% of a percent is still a lot. So Blackstone Group Incorporated Asset Management. This is a new holding. Year to date, it's up only 1%. So this still could be a great opportunity to buy. Blackstone Group is alternative management and financial services firm the largest alternative investment firm in the entire world. It's quite ironic, really, that he runs an investment firm and then he's investing into investment firms. But as you can see, Blackstone has invested into notable companies such as Hilton, Merlin Entertainments Group, Performance Food Group, EQ Office for Public Services, United Biscuits, Freescale Semiconductor, Travelport, so yeah, a lot of um, Blackstone's investments would have been hit hard during the uh, 2020 crash. Seems to be a lot in travel. So we're over onto Stockopedia, one of my favorite stock screening platforms. Um, Blackstone Incorporated. It's only got a stock rank of 44, which isn't great. Great momentum, low value, quality, medium. So according to this software, it's a little bit overvalued at the moment. Revenues have been uh, steady, 3.13% dividend, projected to grow to 4.5% dividend in 2021. So that's really good dividend yield. So yeah, revenues forecast to increase, net income forecast to increase, earnings per share forecasted to increase. Let's look at the analyst consensus. So these are analysts who cover this security. We've got people from Deutsche Bank, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs. Six say hold, nine buy, three a strong buy. That's Blackstone Group. So yeah, great company um, in terms of the companies which it holds. However, um, yeah, the price to ratio is a little bit high, 22.4. Price to book, 6.98. Really, you want to be looking for a price to book. If you're looking for a value stock um, between, say, one and two, 6.98 is very high and 22.4. That's Blackstone Group. This one makes up 0.08% of Bill Atman's portfolio. And this is a new addition. 
We've got park, hotel, and resorts. Parks, hotel, and resorts. As you can see here, new holding. Let's check out them. So the share price at the moment for Parks, Hotel and Resorts is similar to when Bill Ackman purchased it, which could be a good sign for value investors. It means you could still get a similar deal to the great um, hedge fund manager, Bill Ackman. So nine, $9.50 as I'm as I'm filming this video, it dropped to oh no, actually dropped to six in April. Seven dropped to six in April, but before February twenty three, there's still room to return. Previously, one thing I do like about the share price of this company is it, there was little volatility at all. It's just been very very steady. Not much growth in the share price. I will say that but very steady, um, which is good to see. Like if you look at that, that's um, on a five year timeline. It's been new enough, like flat, no major dips. This has been the only major dip it's had. So that shows it's a very strong, stable company founded in 1946. And then based in Tyson's Virginia, formed in 2017, a spin-off from Hilton. So it's part of the Hilton Group is a leading lodging real estate investment trust with a diverse portfolio of iconic and irreplaceable hotels located in the US. So it's a, it's a real estate investment trust, a REIT. So let's see, these are the hotels. You've got Hilton Hawaiian Village, Waikiki Beach Resort, Hilton San Francisco, Casa Marina, Hyatt Regency Boston, so it's got a lot of um, iconic hotels from the US in this portfolio. So these are the locations all across the US. Right, so we're over on Stockopedia. Let's check out the stock. Park Hotels Resorts, value 90. So great value stock as um, expected. Momentum only 10 due to the current situation makes complete sense. Quality 51. Stock rank 47. So yeah, I, I agree with the figures there. It's a stable company at a great valuation. Um, there's not a lot of momentum behind it in terms of major growth, even before the incident, but it's a very stable um, company with such iconic hotels. Revenue's been fairly steady. 2.51% compound annual growth rate. So yeah, it's been fairly steady. As you can see, the revenue is predicted to decrease for 2020 but then it expected to increase again for 2021, which makes complete sense. Let's look at the dividend. Dividend yield, it's said here at 19. That's correct, essentially, of 2020 here. 8% dividend, fairly good. Very, very good, actually. 6.56% um, dividend projected for 2021, which is also extremely good. So yeah, revenue forecast to decrease for 2020 and then increase again for 2021. And then probably about by about 2022, I'd say you'd return into normal um, revenue figures, um, obviously depending on the situation with the health crisis. Forecasting net income, yeah, decrease for 2020, increase 2021, earnings per share. Analyst consensus, free sell, one strong sell, seven whole, four buy. So real mixed bag. The analysts are completely confused on this stock. And I can see why. It's obviously, it's got reputable brands, great company, um, great valuation. Price to book value, 0.41%. Now that is an incredible um, book value. Now if you know Benjamin Graham's um, teachings, the intelligent investor, you will know a company with a book value of 0.41% is incredible. It means you're paying virtually 50 cents for every dollar that this company has. On to the next, the Howard Hughes Corporation. So this stock, he's only added to this one in the portfolio. So this is stock number eight if we do a countdown. So he's added 455% compared to his current holding. So this is a real estate company, Howard Hughes Corp. 
Good thing about these REITs is they tend to have very high dividends as it's paid out to the shareholders in form of income from um, rental. Howard Hughes Corporation, major real estate development company based in Dallas, Texas. So some more beautiful properties, Seaport District, New York, Ward Village, Hawaii, Woodlands in Texas, Summerlin, Las Vegas. It's got some beautiful um, areas and properties. Outlet collection at Riverwalk, New Orleans, Bridgeland, Texas. Yeah. A couple of warnings here from this software. It says it's a value trap, adventurous mid cap, stock rank of just 25. So generally, I want to be investing into stocks with a stock rank of around 70 plus. Um, momentum 10, value 68, quality 29. So yeah, good value stock, low momentum due to the incident, of course. Growth seems good though. 15.4% compound annual growth rate on average on the revenue. No details on the dividend there, which is a bit annoying. So forecasted revenue to decrease for 2020, increase for 2021. And same with inc net income and earnings per share. Brokers, one hold, two buy, one strong buy. Not as many brokers analyzing this stock, which could mean it's a great um, buy as many of the larger firms are overlooking this business. Price to book value, 0 0.79. So another value stock. Now you've got to be careful with some of these value stocks because you've got to ask the question, is it a value stock or is it what um, Warren Buffett used to say, the cigar butt, is, meaning it's a cigar that you found on the floor, it's got one more puff in it and then that's it, it's done. Um, you've got to ask yourself that question when analysing the value stocks. Um, great share price, $52 at the moment. It dropped to a low of $40. Before the crash, it was around $100 a share. So if it returns to pre-crash levels, which doesn't have to, um, but if it did, if everything recovers and demand recovers in terms of domestic travel and um, housing in the US, then there's potential that it could double um, in price again. Might take a few years, who knows? So it says here 22.3% 20, below its fair value, according to its um, current earnings figures. Of course, it's not earning anything at the moment. Balance assets, got more assets than liabilities in the short term and the long term, which is a good sign for its financial health. Can't see any details of the dividends. Insider trading, okay. Wow. Okay, this is, this is Bill Atman. I found his transaction. Five hundred million, I believe that is five hundred million Pershing Square Capital on the eleventh of June, twenty twenty. So on the eleventh of June, which was a few weeks ago, Bill Atman purchased five hundred million dollars worth of shares in this company, which is a great sign. There's also been a lot of buybacks here. Mm, yeah, Pershing Square was buying into this business even before the crisis, so in 2019. He pr paid approximately $50 a share for this company. Let's just double check that share price again. So if you purchase now, you'd only be paying $2 more than Bill Atman. Hmm, could be an interesting one. But I am very tempted by this, even though... Some of the numbers say it's it's not as great, but hmm, could be very interesting. So it develops and manages commercial, residential, and mixed-use real estate. So it's a real estate developer. Hmm, very interesting one. I may have to purchase um, some into this due to that insider training. Howard Hughes Corporation. That's definitely one of my favorites. What else have we got? Angelant Technologies Incorporated. Angelant Technologies. Obviously, they're doing stuff for the CV19 as well, of course, like all um, medical companies. Angelant Technologies. 
public research development manufacturing company, spin-off from um, HP. The resulting IPO was the largest in history of Silicon Valley. So it's an analytical laboratory instrument manufacturing company, which does make sense in terms of, you can imagine a lot more, um, a lot more investment is going to go into healthcare. And these are obviously supplying the equipment for the healthcare businesses. It's a nice play on the healthcare businesses. Stock rank 81. So according to this, this is the best stock on this list. Momentum 93, of course. Value 23, quality 89. So fantastic stock in terms of quality and momentum. The value is low. It's got low value score, which means the value is not very good at the moment. Of course, um, all healthcare stocks have just skyrocketed in recent days. It's up to $88 a share. It dropped to 66 during the crash. And before the crash, it was around 84. So it's, it's higher than pre-crash levels. 5% compound annual growth rate. So fairly slow, steady, um, stable growth company. Operating profits been increasing at a nice rate, 17.3%. Dividend yield, 0.78%, 79%, sorry. So revenue forecast to increase, net income forecast to increase, and earnings per share forecast to increase, which are all fantastic signs. Analyst consensus, one sell, seven hold, four buy, three strong buy. Fantastic company, current ratio 1.63%. So this means it can pay off its debts 1.6 times, which is a good sign. Price to book value 5.7, P ratio 25.8. So to me, it's the valuation's high um, for this type of company, but the, the rest of the numbers are all looking pretty, pretty fantastic. Right, on to the next one. Stock number six, we've got Starbucks. Of course, we know Starbucks, the king of coffee. So he's added 85% more shares to his portfolio for Starbucks. It's currently still down minus 15% year to date. That is Starbucks. Let's dive into the numbers of Starbucks. Starbucks, they call it a falling star on this. Hard to say if it is ironic, um, is the word. Um, stock rank 49, momentum 40, value 35, quality 80. So, obviously, it's a high quality company, exceptional brand, well known brand. And you've got a Starbucks in almost every corner of every city right now, multiple every, every block. You've got a Starbucks. Um, total revenue steady, 10% compound annual growth rate. Operating profits there, dividend yield 2.24%, increasing. So a great value investing tip is to look for a steady and increasing dividend. You can see that there. So revenue forecast to decrease for 2020, which makes sense as, it all, as they were all closed for the majority of the year. 2021 increase again, Net income decreased then increase and earnings per share decreased and increase. Yeah, so it all makes sense in terms of 21 hold, seven buy, six strong buy, one strong sell. Interesting with Starbucks. Current ratio, it's not got as much cash in the short term as I'd like to see. Um, I don't um, envision um, Starbucks going out of business. However, usually you want to be looking for a current ratio of 1.5 to 2 to make sure that it's got enough cash to cover its debts. It currently doesn't have enough to cover its short-term liabilities, which is a worrying sign. P ratio 33.4, valuation is also extremely high. So yeah, interesting one, Starbucks. On to my top five now. We've got Lowe's companies. Now I'm sure you've heard of Lowe's if you're from the US. Retail business, home improvement, Headquartered in uh, North Carolina, operates a chain of retail stores in the US. It's a big home improvement um, company in the US. Obviously still selling stuff 4th of July. You can buy some nice uh, fridge freezers there. Right guys, so diving into the numbers for Lowe's companies. 
Stock rank 94. So this is the most highly rated stock on this list so far. Momentum 99, value 38, quality 97. So I think this company's actually benefited from the um, crisis from the look, from the looks of these numbers. Share price before the crash 123. It dropped to 66 at the crash levels and is now increased to 135. So it's higher than pre-crash levels. 5.1% compound annual growth rate in the revenue. So revenue is steadily increased, which is a great thing to see for such a large business. So it's net profits. Let's look at the dividend yield. Dividend 1.782% dividend. So as you can see, revenues forecast to increase, net incomes forecast to increase, and earnings per share forecast to increase. So on a number side, exceptional company, exceptional brand, five hole, 14 buy, 11 strong buy on the analyst consensus. Current ratio 1.2. So it's got enough cash to cover its debts 1.2 times. I'd expect a little bit more, to be honest, in terms of um, financial security. Uh, however, it's still probably okay. Hopefully okay. P ratio 19.5 is a little bit overvalued, I'd say, um, given the current situation. But looks to be an exceptional company. If you got in around here um, during the crash, you would have you would have doubled your money easily. So. Just something to look out for. These crashes, um, when there's volatility, there's opportunity. And you can see that a lot of these crashes. You've got to literally be a true contrarian and observe the masses. When everyone's running away and everyone's panicking, you've got to be there investing. And you will see the fantastic rewards. Um, a few of the stocks I've invested in, they've doubled in value. Um, the only issue is I wish I invested more in. But there you go. At least I was diversified. I've not um, lost anything. Um, so far, which is pretty great. Up oh, nice figures, but like on these companies, it's double. Like if you've got ten thousand pounds worth of savings and you stick it into this company, and it doubled. Then I'd take the ten thousand out and leave ten thousand in, and then you you literally got a risk free stock. Um, if you believe there's just extra exuberance behind um the stock price increasing, anyway, it's me going a little sidetrack. Top four, Berkshire Hathaway. So I do know Bill Ackman actually sold off a large percent of his Berkshire Hathaway in order to be more nimble in the stock market. Um, of course, Berkshire Hathaway, the world's largest conglomerate of businesses owned by the fantastic, legendary Warren Buffett. Of course, during this crash, he's been very quiet. He's holding a lot of cash. He's not been doing much investing, um, which is disappointing to see. Um Berkshire Hathaway is, has actually took a hit as a business. Shares change 35%. So he's increased his position by 35%. The stock is still down 21% to date. So Berkshire Hathaway. I did look at this stock and it seemed to have a lot of banks and a lot of... Um, it's got Apple in there and Coca-Cola and Kraft Heinz. Very, to me, they're very old school companies. Um, some of them are... Yeah, they're all strong brands, but it's got a large exposure to banks, which I did not like, which is why the share price is still low. So 267 it, um, is the moment. It dropped to 240, and before the crash, it was around 312. So still room to potentially recover. Stock rank 58, momentum 53, value 56, quality 59. Compound annual growth rate 5.1%. So it's been a very slow grower, to be honest, um, over the past few years. It's um, it's the I think it's the Warren Buffett hates tech, and tech companies make up 25% of the S&P 500, and they and they're the companies which have actually caused it to grow massively. You've got like Google, Amazon, Facebook, um, those type of companies are the real. Um, big titan, tech titans, and Warren Buffett tends to avoid them. He's got a small position Amazon, um, but that's it really. He should have had a large position there, but that's it. It's a shame really. 2020, so 2020 forecast revenue to decrease, revenue forecast to increase in 2021. Forecasting net income is forecast to increase again and earnings per share. 
Then again, though, you could look at this as a great opportunity to buy Berkshire Hathaway as a contrarian. Um, one hold, one buy. Um, in fact, with the cash on Berkshire Hathaway's books, if Warren Buffett bought back shares, um, it would actually increase the share price massively. Um, so he has got the ability to do that. Um, it doesn't seem his style, uh, to be honest. I think he'd rather invest it. Um, price to book, 1.17. P ratio 17.8. So yeah, valuation's good. Steady company. Um, I can't imagine you're losing money investing into Berkshire Hathaway. Uh, will you get more substantial gains than the S&P 500? Maybe it's at a better valuation. So you could potentially, in terms of growth, um, the S&P 500, you've got obviously these tech giants, um, but it's a high valuation. So you've got to weigh it up and look at the businesses like that. Here we go, onto the top three, Hilton Worldwide Holdings. We know Hilton is, of course, the most well-known hotel brand in the entire world. So it dropped to $55 a share at the bottom of the crash around 3rd of April. Before the crash, 110 US dollars. Now it's around 74 US dollars. Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, so it's around 74 US dollars. So if you believe that Hilton can return to its pre-crash levels, as you can see, its share price is beautiful. These are the type of share price I like to see. Just a sort of steady increase, a couple little dips, but nothing too major, but just a steady increase over time. Um, obviously, travel has been getting a lot more popular in recent years. Um, hotel industry has um, had uh, competition from companies such as Airbnb, um, however, the amount of people traveling at the moment, well, not at the moment, but before the crash was increasing, the industry trend was increasing by a large percentage. I know this as I do consultancy for a travel, um, company, um, as well. So yeah, there's the share price. So the compound annual growth rate's actually been negative. Well, let's go down dividend. 0 0.1, 0 0.2%, not that high, to be honest. So revenue forecast a decrease for 2020, increase again for 2021, nearly returning to pre-crash levels. 2020, 2021 decrease, so yeah. So yeah, 2020 seems like a write-off for the Hilton, of course, because it's been closed. 16 hole, one sell, six buy, three strong buy. Then again, if you're a long-term investor, doesn't make a major difference. Um, if you believe that the company will obviously recover, it is a strong brand, it is a reliable brand. Current ratio 1.42, it's got enough cash in hand. I'd like to see it above two, but then again, will Hilton go out of business? It'll have to cut a lot of jobs, I imagine, in 2020. Stock rank 51, momentum 50, value 39, quality 68. Yeah, so great brand. Average in terms of momentum and um, it's val it's values okay, but um obviously with all the businesses closed, yeah. Right down to my top two, restaurant brands international. So restaurant brands international. It's a fast food company, Canadian US um fast food holding company. They own Burger King. Let's see who else these guys own. Burger King. Popeyes, Tim Hortons, more Pershing Square Capital Management owns sixty percent, sixteen percent. So Bill Ackman's firm actually owns sixteen percent of this restaurant brand international. Three of the world's most loved restaurant brands: Tim Hortons, Burger King, and Popeyes. So very popular brands in the U.S. Popeyes, I don't think we really have that in the U.K. Burger King, yeah, Tim Tim Hortons. Don't, we don't have that one here. Let's restaurant. Now, bear in mind, Bill Atman is a very active investor, so his portfolio can change quite fast in terms of when he buys and sells. He's not as much of a long-term holder as Warren Buffett. He will buy and sell when there's opportunities. So Restaurant Brands International, stock rank 77, momentum 55, value 51, quality 92. So it's a great quality company. Share price dropped to 28 at the bottom of the crash. 
54 now, pre-crash 66. Ooh, beautiful revenue growth. Very, very beautiful revenue growth. So I'll go down to here, it's a bit easier to see. Revenues forecasted, obviously decrease 2021, increase again for 2020. But prior to this, obviously, catastrophe, catastrophic year for the restaurant industry, there was a 36.1% compound annual growth rate on the revenue for this business, which shows fantastic growth. Um, 139% profit growth over the past few years. So these obviously restaurant chains are getting extremely popular in the US. Operating margin 29%. Dividend 3.7%, 3.8%. Go to 4% dividend, fantastic dividend. So yeah, net income forecast to increase for 2020, 2021. Earnings per share. Analyst brokers. One sell six or 11 buy, four strong buy. Current ratio two, so it's got enough cash in hand to cover its liabilities twice, which is great to see. Price to books is a little bit high there, 7.47, that looks very high actually, 22.6. High compared to the, obviously the situation that a lot of these businesses are still closed and it can still have such a high valuation, which seems incredible to me. But yeah, that's Restaurant Brands International. Now on to my last one, we've got um, Chipotle. Um, Mexican Grill Incorporated. So this company is the only one which, um, this is a fantastic company by the way, but it's the only one which Bill Ackman has actually decreased his weighting on. So all the rest he's added to restaurant, he's, um, the restaurant brand international, he's not added to anything on that one. But on this one, he's decreased it by 30%. Now I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I know why. So I'll show you the share price and I'll, t I'll tell you why. So up to, to year to date, it's up 26%. Now, I'm not sure if these guys are delivering in the US. Um, I'm assuming they are because there has to be a major reason why they're at such a high um, price. So they dropped pre-crash, they were around $900 a share. They dropped to $600 a share. And now they're up over $1,000 a share. So they're much higher than pre-crash levels. Um, I'm assuming chain of fast food restaurants, I'm assuming they delivered over the crisis. I don't know. Let me know if you're from the US. Let me know in the comments below. Did these guys, Mexican Grill, did these deliver during the crisis? And is that why their share price is so high? If not, maybe it's Robin Hood investors who just love this business. I do love Mexican food myself, to be fair. So... We'll see. Chipotle Mexican Grill. Oh, the dividends. So, yeah. So, revenues forecast to increase. Earnings per share. Net income. 41. 18 hold. 9 buy. 8 strong buy. Current ratio 1.6. Price to earnings. So, yeah, the valuation is extremely high, but great quality company. 99. It's the highest quality rating on this uh, software. Momentum 93. Stock rank of 82. So fantastic company, very high valuation. So yeah, that is Bill Atman's portfolio. My favorites has to be, well, the business I'm going to do a little bit more research into because I'm looking for great companies at great prices. Um, the Howard Hughes Corp, I'm going to further investigate into that business and potentially park hotels and resorts just to see if there's any potential um, investment opportunities there for me personally. So which stocks in Bill Ackman's portfolio are your favorites and which are you buying? Let me know in the comments below and I'll join in the discussion. Now, I always get a lot of comments below asking Ben, which platform did you use to analyze the stocks in your videos? So I actually used in this video, I used Stockopedia. This is one of my favorite platforms for analyzing stocks. Due to their stock rank, it gives you a clean, simple way of checking the numbers on a great business before investing into it. If you'd like to check it out and see if it's a right fit for you, then I have some great news for you. So I've actually been given an exclusive 25% off discount link just for the viewers of Motivation to Invest. That's you guys. So I'll leave that in the link below. Check it out. Go onto the website. See what you think. See if it's right for you. And then if you want to, you can purchase a subscription if it's right for you and if it helps you with your investing. 
In addition, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And if you'd like more stock market investing tips and exclusive stock picks, which I personally have invested into, then you should definitely subscribe to this channel. And with that being said, I will see you guys on the next video. Invest safe.